Right, hello everyone. Um, thank you for uh, tuning into this video as well. Um, this is going to be a continuation of the other video I've done, which is on the explanation of QAM and QPSK. So I've got quite a lot of emails off you. Thank you very much um, to this email address here, Robert John Weber at googlemail.com. Um, uh, thank you for the the feedback. Um, so I'm going to answer a couple of the questions now. A couple of you have asked me the same thing, so I'm quite sure a few of you are also. Uh, wondering the same thing as well. Basically, how do we turn this 4QAM into, or QPSK, and turn that into a 16QAM or 64QAM or, or 256? How do we actually do this, okay? By the way, this is video four in my series. Um, hopefully you're all enjoying it. Please give me feedback, okay? I'm trying to do this to try and help you guys. I'm not doing it for money, I'm doing it for love. All right. So, what is 4QAM, if you remember the constellation points? By the way, if you haven't seen the previous video, I strongly suggest that you go back and see it. Okay, so, um, 4QAM, we know it's four different mapping points, represented by four different graphs. And 16QAM is where we have 16 different mapping points. Okay, I'm going to focus on 4 and 16, because it's the easiest way of doing it. Alright, so we have 16 mapping points, 16QAM, 4QAM. These are 16 different graphs. Each one of these points here represents a different graph. Okay? Now, to make uh, life um, interesting, <laughs> right, I'm going to label my axis this time, okay? So I'm going to call this 1, this is 1, this is minus 1, and this is minus 1, all right? If you remember from my previous uh, video, okay, at some point, um, so I'm going to roughly draw the graph here, okay? I haven't got my bit of paper this time, okay? I just want to quickly go through this. If you remember on my on the graph that I said at some point I said that this value here is root 2. Well, now I'm going to take you through why is it root 2. Okay? So, um, other point I want you to note, and later on we'll do, I'm going to keep this value as 1. Okay, so this will be my minus 1, this will be my 1, and this will be my minus 1. Alright? I'll come on to that in a minute. Okay, I'm trying to go through this quite quick and not talk about it so much. Alright? So, let's uh, zoom in a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom into my 4QAM or 64QAM. So I want to find what is this value here, all right? So I know that this point here is 1. Sorry about the lack of scale, so that should be there. And I know this point here is 1, so that's my minus 1, that's my minus 1. So, uh, if you've all been to school and 16 years old, <laughs> okay, in fact, you should be able to do this when you're probably about, oh, I don't know, 11 or maybe even younger. All right, so I'm sure you'll understand this bit, all right? Don't worry. Well, all this is, I want to find this vector here, okay? I want to find what this is. So, come on, if you remember how to do this, okay, we've got a lovely triangle here. Okay, how do you do a triangle? It's Pythag, okay? A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Got it yet? Yeah, you should be able to understand this. So on this value here is 1. This value here, I'm going to change colour actually, to make life easier. Right, so this value along here is 1. This value along here is 1. Okay, so this I'm going to call A, this I'm going to call B. Alright, so I've got my A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I've got 1 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared. So I've got 1 plus 1 equals c squared. So I've got 2 is equal to c squared. Now you've got it. c is equal to the root of 2. This value here is root 2. So on my mapping point here is root 2. So here as well is actually root 2. And this is root 2 here. Okay. These, all these vectors here are root 2. Okay, because I have a symmetrical setup, okay, for my 4QAM. I'm keeping it quite simple. I've just got symmetrical mapping, po <coughs> mapping points at the moment, okay? What does this actually mean? What does this translate to here by having a mapping point at this level? Well, it's describing our sine graphs, okay? It's describing the resultant of the sine graph, okay? So what this is, if I'm actually going to look at... So I'm just making this up now completely, okay? Um, don't worry about the phase and that sort of thing. All right, so just imagine that I've got... Uh, uh, some sort of graph that goes like this, all right, so this is my naught, that's my 360 degrees, okay, so what I'm saying is here is root 2, okay, understand? Hope you've got it. So, we've now calculated what that is. Okay, well I've already showed you, so I'm going to almost work back here now, okay, so I'm going to work backwards. What I've said before with 16 QAM is that we have 16 different mapping points, 16 different graphs, okay? So we're actually going to work backwards here, so you hope you understand. All right, uh, best way. So, uh, with my 16 points, I'm 
trying to do this not so quick so I don't babble on so much. This is 1, this is 1, this is minus 1, this is minus 1. I realise I'm repeating myself. So here I know that this value here is root 2. Okay? I don't want to ruin the pen. Alright? This value here is root 2. I've already found that. Okay? And there's another point here, alright? But I don't want to ruin my pen. So I've already found that that point there is root 2. Now, for example, okay, the way that it's done, so on my graph here, I'm going to say that this here is a half. So this is 1 and this is a half. Okay, I hope this is coming up clear here. Okay, and this is minus a half. Okay, and this is a half and this is a minus a half, right? This is how I've chosen to design my mapping points, right? I want them spread out in this way, okay? I want them nicely spread out. I could choose whatever I want, actually. I could choose wherever I want. In fact, in lots of other countries, they have them circular, but this is a whole other thing. Let's not go into that. So, how do I find out, then, for example, what is this mapping point here? So, what is this value here? Why would I want to find the value of a mapping point? Why would I want to find this? Because this would tell me what does the shape of my sine graph look like. Okay, so now I'm going to draw my three graphs. Oh, really not to scale, Robert. Okay, as I said, I didn't put my bit of paper up. I just want to show you the theory, and you should be able to work through this. All right. Um, so here, okay, what am I saying? So I'm going to say this corresponds to my sine, and this corresponds to my cos. All right. So what I'm saying is my one. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I've got. So, in fact, sorry, let me start again. That should be my cos and that should be my sine. All right, this is a whole other bit of maths, don't worry about it. Okay, so my cos wave, I've got at 1. All right, I'm drawing this very, very, very inaccurate here, okay? So my cos wave is like that sort of thing. And my sine, I've only got at a half. All right, so instead of having my whole, uh, my whole sine graph being like this, where it would be 1, I actually want it to be a half. So actually, this is only going to there. So now, I've got, because, uh, 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 how can I say this? So actually now there's another variable. So it's not just if I'm using sine or cos, and I'm, if I'm inverting it and putting it plus and minus, I'm also changing the amplitude. That is my extra um, uh, 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 difference. That is what I am changing. So when I have my four bits, okay, because 16 quam is 4 bits, all right? So if I've got, uh, 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 um, so zero, 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 001 or something like that, okay? These two here would correspond to my cos wave, and these two here would correspond to my sine wave, or the other way around, depending on how you want to set it up. So I would say one of them, this corresponds to if I want it to be plus or minus. So this is if it's going to be plus or minus. And this here can tell me, do I keep it the same size, or do I keep it different, okay? So I've decided that this I want to be positive, this I want to be positive, okay? I'm going to say that. And nor I'm going to say I keep it the same size, so I want my amplitude to be 1. And this one saying, well, actually, no, I want to change it. I want my amplitude to be a half. All right, hope you get it. If you don't understand this, or more, more like if I'm being confusing, tell me and I can redo this video again because I want to help you all. This is what I'm trying to do here. So, should I take a risk now and should I draw this graph for you? Because I know this is going to go horribly wrong now if I do this horribly wrong. I'm not, I'm not even going to take the risk on this, okay? But I can see, right, okay, so it's going to have an amplitude of... Uh, uh, so it's going to have a phase of about uh, 30. C correct me if I'm wrong in this, all right? Please, okay? And I'm sorry if I do this wrong. I think it would look something like this, okay? I think, all right? Like I said, I wanted to do this a bit quickly. I think it would look something like this. But what matters is, is that this point here, this value here, this phase, would correspond, okay? So... God, yeah. Let's bring all of this away. Okay. So now, if I'm just going to look at that single mapping point, okay. So I was looking here, where it was one and where it was a half. Okay. This value here, okay, which I'll call C, 
is equivalent to this. And this phase here, which I'm going to call alpha, is equivalent to this. Our mapping points describe our graphs. That simple. Okay? That simple. So, for example, should we find C? I mean, I'm sure we can do a bit of Pythag. Uh, how about this, actually? Um, I already calculated it because I didn't want to get it wrong during the video, obviously. So, um, I've got, uh, from what I've calculated here, I found out that this value here, this C, is equal to, uh, what have I got? I've got root 5 over 2. Okay? Go ahead, find out what it is. Um, put the answer in the comments below. Uh, let's see if you get it right or not. Let's practice your Pythag from several years ago. Um, well, I hope that's cleaned it up. Um, I know I've gone quite quickly through that, but I didn't want to drag on for a half an hour like I did in the other one, because it's once you understand the rest of it, this should all make sense. So, all the difference is, so if I've got... Uh, so, just to explain the bigger numbers. So, okay, so that's 4 quam, where we have 2 bits, okay? Where I've got my positive and I've got my negative, okay? So my six, so my, if I have four bits, okay, I've got positive, I've got negative, and I've got two amplitudes. Okay, and if I had, which is also, so let's mark this, this is four quam, this is 16 quam, and if I was gonna go 64 quam, yeah, can you get it yet? This is 8 bits. So how do we represent this? Well, we've already got the two things. It's easy. You just do more amplitudes. So this is my positive. This is my negative. Okay? And then also, I've got 4 amplitudes. Alright, so this would help me create my 64 different graphs. Okay? That's all you do. That's it. Um, well, good luck. Let me know if this all makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, then let me know. And I can redo this again, and I can rehearse a little bit better, if you want to know, and plan it a bit better. But I just wanted to rattle off and um, see how good it goes, okay? I'm sort of testing myself here. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'll put down here now, which is a, a link to my LinkedIn, if you want to know, if you want to know a bit more about me, and also a link to my blog that I'll be writing a bit more. And, in fact, video five that I'm going to do in... Any second now, also we'll uh, explain a bit about one of the blog entries that I've got. Anyway, take care, thanks a lot, and thanks for watching. Bye.